Subscribe to MDR. Like for more. Well, in other news now, Bollywood actor Shah Rukh Khan, who went to the U.S. to visit Yale University where he was being honored, was apparently detained for over two hours at a New York airport once again. Shah Rukh Khan, who once betrayed a victim of racial profiling in the U.S., says he was detained by U.S. immigration officials for more than 90 minutes on Thursday. Uh, he said because his name is Khan, Shah Rukh Khan. He said he's the superstar and billionaire, maybe Indian, Indian rupees. Um, last time he was <laughs> held at the JFK for two hours and then Liberty International Airport in New York. The probability of seeing a romantic comedy starring Indian film icon Shah Rukh Khan with the director Karan Johar set in their native country India during the 2000s was bleak. Because at this time, Shah Rukh was becoming synonymous with the symbol of the new Bharat, the first post-liberalization hero to come out of the new, expanding and inviting India, welcoming foreign investments and consequently, attracting foreign cultures and hey, foreign people. This modified India's metropolitan culture over the 90s and 2000s into a hybrid of Indian values with a Western coding. So Shah Rukh Khan, being a marketing genius, used his previous success with unconventional roles to create a new type of a leading hero. Hyper-energetic, unbelievably optimistic, and always globe-trotting. This new age gentleman who was both style and substance, his style being Western and the substance of his personality being Indian. And no other film exemplifies this better than DDLJ. A film which in its first half takes the two leads all over Europe, falling in love and then fighting for that love to win in the second half full of moral conflicts taking place entirely in India. You see, this changed everything offering audiences a chance to escape from the daily chaos of life and into a world of fantasy, and be brought back to it by the end. But only just. This spanned an almost parallel universe in which these films would take place, where economic obstacles, if they existed at all, were easily overcome through teamwork, and the actual conflicts in life were of morals, godly interventions, fate and love. <laughs> You know, themes beyond materialism. Shah Rukh Khan's typical hero proved that even in death, separation or chaos, one's confidence and belief can drive them towards the ultimate victory. Happy Valentine's Day, Mika. Happy Valentine's Day. The streak of continued success culminated in many, many memorable films, especially in the collaborations with Aditya Chopra and Karan Johar who are both cousins in reality, by the way, resulting in instant classics like Kuch Kuch Hota Hai, Kabhi Khushi Kabhi Gum, Kal Ho Na Ho, and Kabhi Alvida Na Kehna, all released during the same decade, and most of them starring Kajol as the female lead. So as this decade came to a close, in 2010, the trio of Karan, Shah Rukh, and Kajol announced a new project. It quickly became a cultural event. The project's title hinted at something commercial, perhaps an action thriller. Some speculated it was yet another rom-com, but the final product first shocked and then surpassed audience expectations. This film was not your typical rom-com, nor was it an action-packed thriller. It was something, I don't know, liberating. I can't exactly remember my first experience of watching My Name is Khan, but what has remained clear in my memory is that this film was not among my SRK favorites growing up. Not that I lacked appreciation for the film, but rather I was too naive and too pure to see the reality of the world that it was portraying, to grasp the gravity of the issues it was presenting. You know, issues of hate, discrimination, racism, sexism, and violence. And being shielded from such harsh realities at the mere age of eight made it difficult for me to fully understand the film's message. It was only years later, down the line, when I experienced my first encounter with racism that it finally dawned on me what the film was trying to convey. I vividly remember a moment when an American girl I was friends with nonchalantly mentioned that although she liked me, she would have preferred me to be lighter skinned. 
It was not a moment that immediately changed my perception of the world, but it began to make me realize that I was to be boxed in by others dictating that my skin color was partially a defining factor of my social being. And it hurt me, you know, being told that I'm almost good, almost likable, but just not there yet. And it's not like this was something I could work toward. It was something that I was born with. After this, I began to notice things in life, like how there were beauty products promoting how to lighten one's skin in India, like glowing face washes and bleach, and how in the West there were beauty products promoting how to darken one's skin, like spray tan. It was a baffling contrast of unsatisfaction with oneself I could not fathom. When the next time I caught the movie My Name is Khan on television, I was awestruck with this newfound depiction of the Western society to Indians that is widely applauded for its imports of entertainment, culture, and values, yet is still revealed to be deeply divided by something as irrelevant as skin color and name. This film differed from the usual Johar SRK collaborations in that it attempted to deliver a thought-provoking social message about the challenges that people from the East encounter in the West. It was not just a piece of mere entertainment like their previous films, but rather an ideological tool that bravely took on the issues of discrimination at a time when it was most needed, during the transition towards the new decade. It was almost a revelation for the young India potentially looking for a Western future, to prepare them for the unprecedented underbelly of this supposedly fantastical-looking wonderland. The dynamics of My Name is Khan do not end here, though. Usually, Indian films are criticized for their poor portrayals of mental health. One such example being Tare Zameen a 2007 film depicting the trials of a young kid troubled with dyslexia. It has been popularly criticized by foreign media for its alleged romanticization of dyslexia as a gift. But My Name is Khan does not even give the critics a chance. Shah Rukh Khan's portrayal of Asperger's syndrome is so excellently executed that it's hard to debate why he did not receive international accolades for his performance. He not only thoroughly understood the complexities of Asperger's syndrome, but he used them selectively, never overplaying the condition. Take for instance his arguments with factual reliance. Bees, bees, bees. Signals, eh? or, or take his complete honesty even in the harshest of situations. Why are you going to Washington, D.C.? I'm going to meet the President of the United States. Shah Rukh Khan is famous for swooning the audience over with his eyes. But in this film, we barely get a direct shot of him looking into the camera, at the audience. Rather, the character's gaze seems to peer elsewhere into the abyss, imparting a sense of mystique, but the innocence to his demeanor makes that air of mystery familiar, almost childish in nature. My Name is Khan is perhaps one of Shah Rukh Khan's best acting performances of all his films in that it is hard to decipher what makes it brilliant. But its subject matter and the relevancy of the themes discussed in the film make it the most important film he starred in. And as an actor in his 40s, it expresses the range of SRK being able to convey an authentic vulnerability and childlike sensitivity that is rare to see in today's world. And we see that in SRK in reality. Sometimes he acts like a confident kid and sometimes he's just open and raw. That sort of unpredictability makes him human, and maybe it's why he comes across as so charismatic and so likable. I'm confident with the socio-political leanings of today's award culture, Shark would have taken all the awards home if the film came out in today's climate. But like always, people blame him for doing commercial cinema. Where are they all when he does something like this? You get people saying that Chuck De India and Swades are the only important classics from SRK. Yet both films tanked at the box office when they were released. It hurts the actor, the director and the whole team of the film if it does not get its recognition when required. Take the example of The Thing, considered by many to be one of the greatest horror films of all time. Yet it too flopped when it had come out, leaving John Carpenter, its director, furious when his film was called a cult classic down the line. Because he was like, where the f were you all when the film came out? Thirteen years have passed since the release of My Name is Khan, and despite becoming the highest grossing film of 2010, receiving high praise from renowned public figures such as Paul Coelho, who strongly suggested this film to his readers, and James Cameron, who called it one of his favorite films, My Name is Khan is still not discussed as much, not revisited as much, and not recognized as much as it should be. 
It is unfortunate that only a year within this film's release, SRK would be stopped at an American airport by the immigration officers for reasons apparent to them. But regardless, it's a film that delivered its message, and hopefully some received it as such. It is important to acknowledge that My Name is Khan is not without its flaws. It lacks conviction in some areas. However, it is an exemplary blend of commercial Bollywood cinema and artistic expression. It is time to recognize that My Name is Khan is, indeed, the most important film of Shah Rukh Khan.